Chapter 9 Mom, it snowed! Bentley tore open their bedroom door and raced to the window to look at the white snow covering everything outside. Do you know where the sleds are? Bentley, I thought we talked about you just barging in here. Kelly moaned and put a hand over her eyes as she tried to wake up. You need to knock and get permission. There's snow outside, the first snow of the season. Bentley hopped on her side of the bed. Caden says the school is canceled because it's still coming down. They expect lots more. That's nice. Dylan popped a pillow over his head. We all get to sleep in. No. Bentley rolled his eyes. It's tradition that we get to go tobogganing. It is. Kelly sighed. Okay, I'm up. Get the others and meet me in the kitchen. Tobogganing? Dylan asked as Bentley raced out of the room. He lifted the pillow to look at her. I thought we weren't supposed to do anything strenuous with Bentley until after the custody hearing. We don't even know when the hearing is supposed to be, Kelly reasoned as she got up. Plus, it's tradition. How dangerous can tobogganing be? The snow is like one big pillow. Need reinforcements? He raised an eyebrow. Absolutely. Kelly smiled as she headed out of the bedroom to start breakfast. Remember to dress warm. An hour later, it was confirmed that the school really was cancelled. Everyone was fed, sleds and crazy carpets were found, and Dylan delegated his work to one of his employees. Kelly felt really good about this outing as a family. There was a hill right on the property, so they didn't even need to drive anywhere. It was a bit bigger than the public sledding hill in the park near Kelly's previous apartment, but Bentley was getting older, so she reasoned it had to be okay if Avery had done it last year. They had races down the hill. They ganged up on Dylan for a snowball fight. They made huge snowmen. Kelly broke out the thermos of hot chocolate that she had brought, and they enjoyed the beverages with a couple of cookies each. Kelly loved how it seemed like they were all gelling as a group. Even Dylan was having fun, she could tell. Maybe afterward they could drag out the Christmas tree and do some decorating. Then they decided to have one last run at the hill before going back to the house. It was going really well until Kelly's crazy carpet went out of control. She wasn't sure what she had done, but suddenly she was traveling down the hill backward. Kelly shrieked in laughter as she watched the guys get smaller as she picked up speed in the snow. Dylan was waving his arms and shouting something. What? Kelly yelled back, then suddenly her whole world changed. There must have been a rock under the snow, or a drift, because for a moment she was airborne before her back hit the trunk of a tree. The air left her body with a whoosh as she fell to the snow gasping. Kelly laid there, looking at the branches of a pine in the sky, trying to remain calm as her lungs worked to bring in air. Please be okay. Dylan stumbled and fell to his knees beside her. His hands shook as he tore off his gloves and gently touched her face. Caden, get my cell phone. It's on my dresser in the bedroom. She pulled in another shallow breath. It took a lot of effort. Kelly knew that she just knocked the wind out of herself. Nothing else seemed to hurt just yet but she couldn't speak because she wasn't getting enough air. Kelly tried to assure Dylan that she was okay. Even though her lips moved, there wasn't enough air to create the words. Dylan lost what little color he had. He looked so frightened. Kelly, please don't die. She wasn't going to. Kelly rolled her eyes at the silliness of what he had said. She moved her hand to touch his cheek. Dylan grabbed her hand to prevent her. Don't move, he cautioned. You could have a spinal injury. I'm fine, she managed to wheeze. She was starting to breathe a little easier now. Mom, Bentley called, are you okay? Stay right there, Dylan said sternly. I want you and Avery to stay together where I can see you. Kelly turned her head to look at her son, yet Dylan stopped her again. Please, Kelly, stop moving. I'm okay, she smiled reassuringly despite her faint voice. Just knock the air out of me. We will let the paramedics check you out as soon as Caden returns with my phone. Dylan brushed her hair out of her face. He seemed to have calmed down a little, but Kelly noticed that his hand was still shaking. I'm a nurse, Kelly stated calmly. I'm okay. You could have a concussion. Maybe whiplash or back injury. Dylan swallowed hard. Or you could be in shock and not know that you have a broken bone. Kelly laughed. I'm not in shock. I just needed a minute to breathe. Caden rushed to a stop beside them, holding out the phone. Here, are you okay? I'm great, 
Kelly smiled at the out-of-breath boy. If your dad would just let me up. You are getting checked. Dylan grabbed the phone. He was about to dial the number when Kelly grabbed it out of his hand. No, Kelly sat up. I am okay. I don't need you to call 911 for nothing. Kelly, you hit a tree, Dylan protested. You should have seen it, Kelly interrupted. You got air right before you hit the trunk. It was awesome. No, it wasn't, Dylan stated firmly. Go stand with your brothers. Caden rolled his eyes. So you can argue? We aren't going to argue, Kelly said. Her back was a little sore. However, it was the last thing she was going to admit to Dylan. I don't need an ambulance. Let's just go up to the house so we can enjoy the rest of the day. Do you guys have a Christmas tree we can put up? In the storage room somewhere, Caden said. Can we have one this year, Dad? Kelly, Dylan sighed. She grabbed his face in her mitts and looked him in the eyes. I am perfectly fine. Take your brothers and go drag out the boxes of Christmas stuff. Dylan grimaced. Kelly and I will be along shortly. Grab the sleds. Don't forget to put all your wet stuff in the mudroom and change your clothes if they're wet. Kelly quickly said as Caden scooted off to collect Bentley and Avery. She grinned as they ran up the hill, pulling the sleds after them. You called them brothers. Well, they are, Dylan remarked dryly. We didn't even need the dog yet. Christmas, she smiled up at him. I was thinking we could rescue one from the pound at Christmas. Something already potty trained? Are you sure you want something without a pedigree? He frowned. Are you sure you want a perfectly good dog to get put down because we were snobs when we could have adopted it? She countered. Okay, you and I go to the pound. I'm not going to have three boys picking out three different dogs or something that is inappropriate, Dylan said. Agreed. Kelly found that an easy compromise. Now let's go up to the house. I'm starting to get cold sitting here in the snow. Dylan grabbed the cell phone out of her hand and put it in a pocket. You are not walking. I'll carry you. You don't need to, Kelly protested. I'm fine. If you feel the slightest twinge of pain, we are calling it in and getting you checked. Dylan ignored her protests and lifted her in his arms. He began the long slog through the snow back to the house. Kelly was short, but she wasn't exactly thin. She knew that she had put on a couple of pounds since she lost her job because she wasn't getting as much exercise a day. She wondered how long Dylan could manage under her weight. While he had proved he was fairly fit during the camping trip, she wasn't sure that he went to the gym very often. It seemed like he was more in the desk job now. Dylan gritted his teeth and ignored the remonstrations his mind was sending him for not keeping in shape. Sure, he ate okay and played with the boys, but he had neglected going to the gym or doing much activity. Spreadsheets didn't require a lot of physical effort. Neither did meetings or memos. He needed to get out more. Like today, which had been fun until that heart-stopping moment where Kelly had hit the tree. He felt scared just thinking about how close he had come to losing her. Possibly losing Bentley, too, since if Kelly died, it would be up in the air whether a court would award custody to the paternal grandparents or a stepdad. Kelly and he would have to discuss making a joint will. That was if he didn't have a heart attack before he got her to the house. Dylan tried to breathe evenly. He wasn't going to let Kelly know how much this was costing him. He could easily carry her for short distances. That wasn't the problem. It was more that there was snow he had to plow through, and it was uphill to the house, which wasn't exactly next door to the hill they had been using. Dylan vowed to get a gym membership, or buy some equipment and put it in the basement. There was tons of room in the house, like the storage room that was full of things, including the Christmas decorations decorations that hadn't been used since Shannon's death. He should have done Christmas properly for the boys, but he'd been selfish and wallowing in grief. He had been wrong to deny them that joy. I'm okay, Kelly said in his ear. You can put me down and we can both walk to the house. He had the feeling she was laughing a little at him. Dylan found he didn't mind because it meant that she was feeling better. Humor me? You are talking about my back, but yours is going to hurt if you keep carrying me, Kelly advised softly. You're going to take the afternoon easy, sitting down all times, he puffed. Make the kids cater to you. What about you? Are you going to cater to me? She asked playfully. I'm carrying you, he reminded her. 
My back won't let me cater afterward. Ouch, Kelly laughed. Dylan couldn't stop his answering smile at their teasing banter. He had her push the doorbell until Avery came to let them in. They peeled off their outer layers in the mudroom. I really ought to clean up a bit in here, Kelly remarked at the coats and boots strewn across the floor with the snow. Tomorrow, Dylan said firmly. He picked her up and deposited her in an armchair in the living room where the boys had been dragging boxes of Christmas items to. He would do it later when she wasn't looking. Do you need anything? How are you feeling? Her back was sore, but okay, considering she had hit a tree at full speed, Kelly reasoned. There was no way she was going to let an overprotective Dylan know that. I'm good. You can get me some water if you would like. Dylan got her the water and watched as she exclaimed over the items the boys found in the boxes. They set up the Christmas tree and Kelly happily gave directions as the decorations began to find places to be during the holiday season. The boys were getting along wonderfully and included the box of meager Christmas items Kelly and Bentley had brought with them. Dylan managed to get the mudroom set to rights and make dinner for them all. They agreed to watch a movie before bedtime since everyone was pretty tired from tobogganing and decorating. All five of them piled onto the couch. Before the end of the movie, Dylan was carrying sleeping boys Bentley and Avery to their rooms. Caden just yawned and waved goodnight as he made his way to his own room. Kelly shut off the movie and started the dishwasher. Her back was still a little sore, but overall she felt fine. She stretched and went to their bedroom to get ready for bed. She yawned as she pulled on one of Dylan's oversized tees. It had been a really busy day. Kelly? In here, she called to Dylan as she brushed her hair. You shouldn't be up, he protested as he shut the bedroom door. How many times do I have to tell you that I am okay? Kelly put down the brush and gave him a hug for reassurance. She didn't know why he was treating her like she was fragile and close to breaking, but she was made of stronger stuff. You could have died today. His words were muffled in her hair. I didn't. Puzzled, Kelly pulled back a little to look at him. I'm right here. He framed her face in his hands. There was no hesitation as he kissed her urgently. Kelly threaded her hands through his hair, enjoying the feelings his kisses produced. All thoughts fled as he directed her back towards the bed. Don't wake your mom. Dylan shushed the boys and quickly loaded them up into the SUV. They would get breakfast on the way to school at the drive through He had left Kelly asleep in their bed. Part of him wanted to grin goofily at what had happened between him and Kelly last night. The other part wanted to run as fast as possible. When he'd seen her get hurt yesterday, it had knocked his entire world over. He barely knew Kelly, and yet his feelings were invested in her. It was downright scary. Dylan didn't want to feel things for her. He didn't want to like her, to be falling down the slippery slope to loving her. It was hard to protect oneself from hurt, from the uncertainties and cruelties of life when feelings were involved. He could have lost her yesterday. What would his kids do if they got attached to her and Kelly decided to leave after the custody issue with Bentley was sorted out? They had already lost a mother and a sister. Even if they didn't remember Wren, they did Shannon. Dylan wasn't sure he was ready for Kelly and Bentley to fill the holes his wife and daughter had left when they died. He had been a wreck when Wren died. Thank goodness for Max and other family. Dylan had neglected his kids while he had dealt with the grief and recriminations he felt. He had nearly been as bad when Shannon passed, even though they had known it was going to happen for years. Her slow descent hadn't made it any less painful. How would it be if he did lose Kelly? couldn't afford to get so attached. Dylan didn't want to go through all that pain again. He needed to be there for his kids to be a functioning dad. Last night had been a mistake. A wonderful, amazing mistake that he couldn't repeat if he meant to keep his head clear. Dylan sobered at the thought. Kelly was a vibrant person and it would be hard not to get drawn in by her. He had to keep his distance from her, which would be difficult since Derek had advised them to share a bedroom. Hey, Dad! Caden called from the back seat. Yes? Dylan looked in the rear view mirror at the kids. You missed the turn to our school! Caden pointed back along the road. With a start, Dylan realized Caden was correct. He managed a couple of turns to get them back on track. Dylan apologized for being distracted as he brought the boys into the school. It's cool, Dad, Caden said confidently. 
If we happen to be late, we can truthfully blame you. Dylan checked his watch. You are not late, and you have more than enough time to get to class, Caden. Maybe. Caden grinned as he raced down the hallway. Stop running. Dylan sighed as he watched Caden join a group of kids. He knocked shoulders with his best friend, Cece, and immediately began chattering to her. Dylan could see by Caden's excited hand movements that his son was describing how Kelly had hit the tree yesterday. Dylan, how wonderful to see you today, Susan Hythe purred as she approached. Susan, Dylan said flatly, if you will excuse me, I need to get the boys to class. She smiled. I was meaning to talk to you about the Christmas fundraiser. Some other time, he said as he grabbed Avery and Bentley's hands. It won't take but a few moments. Perhaps after you've seen Avery to class? Susan patted Avery on the head. It's so nice that your dad walks you to class. Look, he's taking your little friend along as well. Dylan takes me to class a lot. Bentley looked at Susan in confusion. Mr. Ramsley, dear. Susan leaned down to Bentley's height as she tried to correct him. You should be calling him Mr. Ramsley. That's not what my mom said, Bentley frowned. I'm sorry, Susan, I'm not available after taking the boys to class. Dylan decided to be direct. I need to get home to check on my wife. She had a bit of a spill yesterday. Wife? Susan straightened up briskly. Excuse me? When did that happen? Recently. Dylan smiled. He hoped she would stop trying to chase him now. Pardon me, I would hate for Avery and Bentley to be late for class. He brushed past Susan and dropped the boys off at the second grade. When Dylan returned home, he found Kelly in the kitchen rubbing her back as she grabbed a bowl of cereal for herself. "'I thought you said you weren't hurt,' Dylan glowered as he put his keys away. "'It's just a twinge. I'm fine.' Kelly had a dreamy smile on her face as she rose on her tiptoes to give him a lingering kiss. Dylan allowed it, savored it for a moment, before telling himself it was the last one. He needed to guard himself and his sons. Dylan hardened his heart. I thought I would work at home today, just to make sure you were okay. If you need anything, I will be in my office. What if I need you? Kelly smiled up at him and looped her hands around his neck. Kelly? Dylan gently disentangled himself from her. Last night was a mistake. We shouldn't have done that. We barely know each other and shouldn't get involved right now, especially with Bentley's custody appeal coming up. Kelly frowned. He could see the hurt and confusion in her eyes. I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? No. Dylan took a deep breath. I can't do this right now. I can't become involved with you. I have to put Avery and Caden first. We don't know what's going to happen after the custody appeal, and I think it's best if we just go back to cohabitating. Cohabitating, she echoed. Yes, he nodded firmly. I think it's for the best. For the best, Kelly said in disbelief. I'm sorry, but I can't give you any more than that right now, Dylan said. When? When could you give me more? Kelly questioned, frowning. Dylan decided to avoid her question. I need to get to work. Excuse me. Kelly hugged herself. Dylan retreated to his home office. He closed the door, flicked on his laptop, and stared at the login screen. He had done the right thing, he told himself. It had been over two weeks, and he was avoiding her. He dropped off the kids and picked them up. Then he would spend hours out at the office or in his home office, barely surfacing for supper. Sometimes he played a game with the kids or made sure they did their bed routines. Other times he left it to her. Then she went to bed alone. Kelly wasn't sure where he was sleeping, but it wasn't with her. She had tried to talk to him, but he said he was swamped with work. Kelly didn't believe it for a moment. She was also worried because this went against the advice that Derek had given them. If the Islingtons found out, they could use it against them during the appeal. Kelly had baked up a storm, and while he had eaten, Dylan hadn't given any indication that he wanted to be with her because of her cooking. Plan A was failing. Plan B, enticing her with her sexy wiles, was a complete failure as well. She simply didn't have the confidence that other women had to put on lingerie and seduce her own husband. While other women might make it look amazing— 
Kelly looked at herself in the mirror, seeing short and rounded. Not exactly the woman of every man's dreams. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe he hadn't enjoyed their night together as much as she had. That was a lowering thought. Kelly needed a plan C pronto. She wanted to make this marriage work. Not because it was nice to have money for the first time in her life. She was actually a little scared of the amount in her bank account and had no wish to know the limit on the gold card. No, she just wanted to stay married to Dylan because she was afraid she might have fallen in love with him. It was all his fault. Dylan had stepped in like a fairy tale prince at the crucial moment to save her from the Islingtons and the mean Judge Bolan. How could a girl not fall in love with that? However, her rescue had been anticlimactic ever since he had decided they wouldn't suit after all. Not that Kelly was a princess, but what did a girl do in this situation? Kelly set her brush down and looked critically at herself in the bathroom mirror. Perhaps she would go and do that makeover that Tiana had suggested. She texted Tiana yet again to see if she wanted to come with her. Kelly frowned. Tiana hadn't responded to her voicemail or text lately. She wondered what her friend was up to. Maybe they should get together for a girl's night, unless Tiana was too busy working. Sometimes Tiana did pick up extra shifts during the holiday season to make some cash. Kelly looked at the calendar as she brushed her teeth. It was the 15th already. She needed to get things set up for Christmas. She had no idea what to buy for Dylan, and the holiday was only ten days away. Wait a minute. The toothbrush hung in her mouth a moment as she flipped the calendar back, then forward to December. It couldn't be. She couldn't be. Could she? They had only been together without one night. Twice her brain reminded her. Once with passion and once in exploration on the same night. Then Dylan had basically freaked and been mostly avoiding her and their bed since. He had buried himself in work. She was late. Kelly fought through the disbelief. It had taken months to get pregnant with Bentley. Then again, Christopher had been through radiation. She shouldn't be pregnant just from one night. That was extremely rare. Putting her hand gingerly to her abdomen, Kelly questioned if she felt any different lately. Other than being five days late, when normally she was like clockwork, Kelly felt the same. Maybe it was just all the stress of everything lately. She would have to buy a kit. The question was when Kelly could do it without Dylan noticing. The last thing she wanted with the upcoming appeal so close was him thinking he had to stay with her if she was pregnant. Kelly wanted Dylan to stay with her because he wanted to. What if he did regret their night? What if he didn't want any more kids? What if he wanted to divorce her? Kelly didn't have any of those answers. She popped the toothbrush out of her mouth and patted her stomach. It will be okay. It would have to be. She loved being a mom to Bentley, and she would love to be a mom to Dylan's child, too, if there was one. Kelly just didn't know how she was going to do it alone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Reluctant Husband. Also, please click the bell for notifications so that you won't miss any videos. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.